Okay, wrapping up on these tutorials, I'd like to show you the last acquisition mode, which is also a very popular one. Uh, it's generally used for kinetic studies, or anytime you're looking at a change in the fluorescence intensity as a function of laboratory time. And this is a popular mode to be used for a lot of kinetic studies. Uh, you will choose time base, is what it's called. Once you click time base, you'll then be able to enter the parameters into the time base experiment. So let's take a look at our tryptophan. Let's excite at 290 and look at the emission at 340. And we're going to choose how many points per second we want. So obviously if we're expecting a fast change or maybe we're trying to fold this protein or unfold this protein, um, this will allow us to distribute the amount of points so that we can resolve any type of quick changes that may happen. I'm not going to be adding anything to the sample, so I'll just demonstrate something like uh, maybe two points per second and we'll continue this experiment for say a couple hundred seconds. Alright, the sampling rate can go from anywhere from one point per second uh, all the way up to I believe 50 kilohertz. Uh, it just depends on how much RAM that you have available in your system. So let's do a short acquisition here, two points per second, and I'm going to show you a few tricks that we can do uh, while that experiment is running. So let's make sure that the data goes into a new session and we'll just say accept and then we'll say start to start this experiment. Okay, we'll set this to a single window and you can see we're getting our intensity as a function of time. So we're sitting here at about uh, 468,000 counts per second and you can see here the fluctuation and the graph has set up an auto scale for that fluctuation. We can change that if we wish. We can do auto scale from zero and we also have the ability to uh, pan and move the graph uh, into a position where we can see that a little bit better. Right, so if we want to pan the graph we can switch to the pan tool and then we can move the graph around. Uh, or we can use the zoomer tool and select a region uh, around the trace uh, which will zoom into it. What I'm going to do is when we add something to the sample or if we were to do something that we're expecting a change we'll want to be able to create a marker or an event marker and to generate an event marker you simply need to click on the trace that you want the marker on so I've highlighted it's turned blue and then we want to click on the graph window next so we can we don't want to zoom it so I'm just going to go back to quick auto scale here disable the pan tool <clears throat> and I select the graph and I hit E I hit E and that will generate an event marker now in order to see the event marker you have to make sure this checkbox here is on hide or show events so when I hit the E it created an event but it wasn't visible unless I have this little toolbar uh, checked on. That's tricked me a couple of times. Make sure if, if you generate a marker and you don't see anything just to remember to go over and make sure that the event markers are showing. So if we did something else to the sample I could hit E again and now you'll see it's labeled event 2. Now these events um, have information attributed to them and uh, I can simply open the information window on an event marker and you can see the events at the time they were created. This is the time in seconds. So the first event was created at 85 seconds and the next one was at 119 seconds. And we can relabel these captions if we want using the caption menu. It's, if we don't like event one, we can give it a different name. Okay, so this is typically how a time-based experiment will progress. You can see this downward trend here. This is due to photo bleaching of the sample. So you'll want to make sure that you control the amount of excitation light. Don't use too much light or you will experiencing some photo bleaching in your sample. So we can abort this experiment at any time. We don't have to do the, the full 200 seconds. And it's always a good idea to take your graph out of auto scale every now and then just to get an idea what might be happening. Um, you can see that actually the photo bleaching isn't too bad when we do an auto scale from zero, but there is definitely some evidence of it happening. That's uh, basically how to do a time-based scan, and um, we hope that you enjoyed these tutorials. 
I'll be going through some additional tutorials and give you an overview of some of the other functions within the software. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed them.